for, aside from making these these amazing videos, is once they start getting out, is there anything that you're doing to sort of push the process along of a gang passed around? Is there any specific ways of working you, YouTube or working social networking? We are pretty active on on all of our social networks. It's a big part of my job is is staying in touch with the fans, and it's two parts. It's still old school publicity and marketing, and and you know getting the word out, and you know having a good publicity team, which you know OKGo okay has a phenomenal publicity team uh, behind them. It gets you know a, a lot of placement, a lot of you know blog. And, and news sites and that sort of thing, but you know we're sort of using it as, as a one-two punch. I mean, I'm I'm not the only person on our digital team. I have a counterpart in LA, um, a woman by the name of Ariel Kilroy, who does a lot of working the partnerships with you know, YouTube and AOL and and the other sort of big corporate websites to, to help get the word out. And then I'm doing a lot of the spreading the stuff through the social networks, and then also coming up with sort of cool and fun projects for fans to get involved with. We do a lot of making our content available for remix. The WTF video that came out. In November, we we released. You know, this was a, a green screen video, sort of a psychedelic uh, looking one take video, and uh, we released the raw green screen footage and invited all of our fans to you know load it up in iMovie or whatever and make their own videos from it. So we've got you know 20 or 30 sort of video responses on YouTube of people who have spent you know hours and hours and hours making their own version of the video, and they're awesome. Like some of them are just uh, amazing, and so we're sort of doing little projects like that with every piece of of creative content that we're pushing out there, just to get people more into interested you know there's sort of the level of okay eight and a half million people watch the video you know do all of them know that it was okay go no you know probably most of them just thought this was a cool internet video you know but and but that's how you sort of get that first level of casual fans and then the question is how do you sort of take you know a certain percentage of those casual fans and convert them into the real diehard fans and so for us it's a lot of these you know deeper digging in projects that get people really caring about and working with your content that really converts them from the casual fan to the hardcore fan does OK Go primarily, do they want to be seen as multimedia artists, or how do you, you, you talked about the super fan, but how do you get people to focus on the music? Right. Um, you know, honestly, for OK Go, and, and maybe they're unique in this, I mean, I, I think that they see themselves as a real sort of next generation sort of, sort of content creators. Uh, you know, I think that they, or I know, that they are as serious about and excited about and interested in making videos as they are uh, as making their music. I mean, they, they just see it as another way that they want to express themselves. I mean, when I came on board, the album was just about ready to come out, and they already had extensive treatments laid out for every single song on the album, for you know these elaborate, crazy videos that they want to make for every single song. And I think that's rare. You know, I don't think that every band does that. I think that, you know, historically, the music video has essentially been a, a promotional tool, right, to sell albums. You know, OK Go isn't really too focused on selling albums. Yes, they want to sell albums, but they also want people to see their videos and come see them live and buy their t-shirts and, you know, just generally be excited about, you know, the, 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 these creators who are this band OK Go. The guys are just really creative in general. They had these, like, um, radio plays that they used to do, these like one minute little radio play podcasts um, that would sort of be these like mystery things that they released and then people would sort of guess what they were supposed to bring to the show and like you'd bring Tim a burrito or a pack of crayons or you know whatever uh, kind of stuff and it's just like bizarre and fun and so I think that they're just excited about creating content. I mean, this State Farm Insurance sponsorship, I personally thought there, there might be you know some flack or, or grumblings about, about a corporate sponsorship. None. I mean, almost none with the fans. I mean, everyone's just thrilled that the band found a way to, to you know, be able to make this video. It's not cheap to make uh, music videos even now. And so, um, you know, if, if the label isn't supporting that or, or, you know, there's no other way to fund it, then, you know, you do what you can. But, I, you know, it's it's been an interesting shift in general. I, I don't think anybody is... I don't think people are as phased about corporate sponsorship or selling out as much as they were sort of, you know, even 15, 20 years ago. You, know, you go to a show and you get so excited about it and, and OK Go do an amazing live show. It's like super high energy, uh, fantastic show. And the sort of the, the Twitter stream during the show and immediately after the show, you know, and Facebook posts is, is great. Everybody's all jazzed up. But then, you know, how do you get them to come back? You know, maybe just their friend brought them to the show and they're not really, you know, they don't even never been to the, the Facebook page. So I asked Damien if he would just take a shot from the stage every night. And so he'd sort of he'd raise up the lights and he'd tell the, the fans that he's taking a photo and it's going to be posted on Facebook and you should check it later. And the idea was to get everybody to tag themselves in the photo. And we weren't really sure if it was going to work and it worked out fantastic. I mean, you go in, there's like 100, 150 people who have tagged themselves in just this sea of like sweaty, happy, cheering faces. It just created a lot of dialogue and, and a lot of talk back. The band really comes up with all the treatments for the video that's their creative ideas or the, you know, or the creative ideas of their friends. They have a lot of amazing friends and a lot of really amazing 
amazing places and you know, MIT Media Labs or sort of all these really cutting edge uh, technology and, and interactive art world kind of people that um, that they're constantly talking with and, and brainstorming with. But everybody is really good at sort of yes anding everything. It's like, oh, we should do this. Yes, and we should do this and this and this. And you know, they come up with these. You know, I try to come up with sort of the craziest, coolest ideas I can think of, and they're constantly coming up with you know all these other uh, ways that we could expand it or, or make it more exciting or more kind of universally accessible. Everyone from you know people you've never heard of to really kind of you know big name you know celebrity style people in their fields you know writing to the, to the band um, and saying oh you know this is this is amazing I want to do a video with you guys or oh you know I've got this crazy technology that I think you like you know once the band gets known for really pushing this sort of creative technology edge um, they get a lot of opportunities and, and a lot of uh, conversations going on the best thing that you can do is just is just connect with your fans um, you know and just really talk with them I mean I really push to try to get Damien and the guys to you know to, to Twitter on their phones and stuff and sometimes they do and when they do that you know fans just absolutely love that because it feels like such a direct connection for them a couple of, of Brooklyn bands who do a fantastic job of you know they're, they're tweeting every day and they're, they're you know they have tumblr blogs where they're posting you know cool videos that they found and just sort of, you know they're sort of setting themselves out there as you know, I don't want to say tastemakers, but really as, as you know, saying these are things that I think are cool. Hey, what's going on with you? You know, hey, we're, you know, we're pulling into you know Memphis. You know, where should we get a bite to eat? It used to be everybody's on MTV and sort of this untouchable, huge kind of other, and, and it's very hard to connect with a band that way. Whereas these days, you know, any band can you know get on their own Facebook page. You know, a lot of big name artists and, and independent artists obviously you know handle all their own social media. I remember growing up and you know, bands that I was just totally in love with and would just love to be able to, you know, go on their Facebook page and be like, you're awesome, or here's a photo I took of you at the show. And, you know, just having that kind of moment where you feel like you've connected with them a little bit. Um, and for me personally, you know, and I don't think everybody feels this way, but this idea of just making your content available, it's just, you know, I feel like the restrictions on content and scrambling to, to monetize the actual you know, the songs or the videos or whatever it is, is just, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's on its way out, right? I mean, I think it's, it's kind of safe to say. Um, obviously, you know, people will support bands and buy their albums and stuff, but if you get, if you, you know, if you connect with fans and you really lock in a fan, they're going to support you. You know, they're, they're going to buy your t-shirt, they're going to come to your concerts, they're going to do, you know, whatever these things are, and it's up to you as an artist to really find the, the ways that you're going you're gonna to have that happen. Yeah. List it, rent it, film it. That's a wrap.